Hello everybody, this is Bob Renner with Community Coronavirus Update number 112. We'll talk about uh, needing three shots to get to safe and endemic, uh, China's mistakes, and what I think we got right in Lincoln, Nebraska. So nationally, uh, most of us are, quote, green, at least by the new CDC and COVID Act Now criteria that, that are being used, but a little worry about what's going on with the Northeast. Should we worry about it and how do we know? Well, how do we, how do we know what data to follow? Uh, so I had a newspaper reporter asked me this last week. I said, well, you know, the problem, we got three sources of data and they all have to get their issues. Number one, our case rate data is good for trajectory. Are we getting better or worse? But it's not a good gauge of severity because uh, of underreporting. So something like 93 out of 100 tests aren't getting reported because they're done at home, for example. Also decoupling, that just because cases go up may not mean it's a problem. If you've got a three-shot vaccination rate that's high, that's not going to lead to hospitalizations. It's not a big deal. Uh, but unfortunately, that goes back to your vaccination rates, how bad that is. Uh, wastewater data is coming up, but it's still a work in progress and not too timely quite yet. Uh, Nebraska is working on this, and I've linked to where you can actually look. The, the, so this is sort of a work in progress. We don't know how good it's going to be yet, but uh, that we do at least have this as a, another thing we can look at. Unfortunately, you'll notice that this is this is what, if I look at the website today, it's about two weeks old. So unfortunately, it's uh, not very timely yet. Uh, so we're really stuck with hospitalization rates for gauging severity. The problem is that's a lag lagging indicator. That tells you where you were three weeks ago. Uh, so it's like driving with the, you're uh, looking through the rearview mirror, which is not an advisable thing to do, unfortunately. So it doesn't. It's a lagging indicator. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like Northeast is heading back up again. So the Northeast region, which includes New York, where those case rates are going up, show that there is an increase in hospitalization, starting to head toward at least the Delta surge, not the Omicron, hopefully, but uh, you know, it is going up a little bit. So keep keep our eyes out on that. Uh, Caitlin Gentilina also pointed out in her May 2nd update, unfortunately, South Africa is heading back up again. Uh, so it's not, so South Africa has really good data, better than ours. Uh, and so we're seeing that the BA4 and 5 variants are heading up. And so uh, the next question there, of course, what about hospitalization? Uh, stay tuned. We'll see what's going on in, in South Africa. Uh, the South African labs are doing excellent work, though. So one thing they did is they actually are looking at breakthrough infections, uh, whether you've been vaccinated or not. And what, they're, what this is showing is essentially is the immunity you have is much better if you've been vaccinated. So you have these people who got a, quote, natural infection from Omicron. It's not persisting very well. You need a combination. You need you still, just because you got the, quote, natural infection doesn't mean you don't need the vaccine. We really need people to get that third shot because that's what gives you that more protectable and durable immunity. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's a lot better than none. Um, she actually did a great uh, interview today. I actually really got a kick out of this because these are two people I followed. So Caitlin Genlina from your local epi, but also Caitlin River, Rivers, who was at Johns Hopkins, but is now at the CDC. And I was on a call uh, a year or so ago. And it was kind of funny. Uh, Caitlin was on the call and her daughter came walking through the door and she said, oh, give me a minute. She had to talk to her daughter. And it was kind of cute. So one of the things I like about Zoom uh, lately was, hey, we see people in their homes with their own kids. And so these two young moms are really, really smart people. Uh, it's a good uh, discussion. And they talk about why our data is so bad. And the short version is, is that Nebraska, the United States does not have a centralized data system. Uh, it's a federal model so most of the data comes from state and local health departments and getting them all of them to work and play well together and submit data is a real challenge especially with our political partisanship and that's one of our main issues right now uh, the good news locally though is our hospitalization rate date and our data in our region is showing their hospitalizations are not going up and they're actually still lower than last summer so hopefully we'll maintain that but the future is going to really going to be tied I think to our three shot vaccination rates uh, so this is what we'll need to do to be, quote, endemic is going to be, dependent, I think, highly dependent on our three-shot vaccination rates. Um, uh, one of the things that, that frustrated me, Politico uh, did an article. I got a lot of people sent me this. I was hoping this would be a good article. I think they actually missed a lot of things in this. Uh, so it talks about, it got a couple things right, but boy, did it miss a lot. What do I think it missed? Well, a couple things. One, uh, what did, there were pros and cons to our approach. Our pro in Nebraska is we did a really good job of closing our schools quickly when it became clear this was going to be a major issue. We actually did it, fa we closed faster than the Northeast, and that gave our hospitals time to prepare. But we also reopened our schools in August of 2020, which a lot of people on the coast didn't do, uh, much to my surprise. Uh, but when we did it, we did it in pretty good. Oh, most of us did it with good masks and contact tracing. And so we were able to get our kids back in school, which helped our kids and our economy. Economy. Uh, I think that's one reason we fared so well. Now, the, the bad thing, unfortunately, is, uh, is that in the fall, a lot of people declared premature victory, fell, fell for the Great Barrington proposal, and a large number of fatalities that could have been avoided weren't. And it shows up in our excess mortality data. So, you know, we initially started pretty good, but then had this huge fall surge because 
people throw out their masks that it was done when it wasn't uh, right before we had our vaccination. So a lot of these, many of these were avoidable deaths if we had just waited a couple more months uh, and got uh, with masks and got our vaccines, but we didn't do that, unfortunately. Uh, we did pretty well in the summer, which follows those, vac those hospitalization rates I showed in the previous slide, but then when our cases did start going up and we had a whole, you know, kind of percolating high number of deaths, most of them were in, in, in non-metro Nebraska, though. So we had a differential approach in Nebraska, which was the, also the, the issue that was missed in the political article, I think. They talked about it a little bit, but not enough. So a whole bunch of things that went right and wrong. So one, Lincoln and Omaha at least did, uh, and some other Nebraska communities kept their masks on, which helped delay till we could get vaccines. And then we had a pretty good vaccine rollout, especially in Omaha and Lincoln. Uh, and many Nebraska nursing homes isolated and vaccinated very well. And so kudos to our Nebraska nursing homes for really doing a great job. A con, unfortunately, a lot of non-metro Nebraska ditched their masks too early as and didn't vaccinate well, and that's why the, more, the mortality went so high up in non-metro Nebraska. Uh, other good things we did, we had a high rate of monoclonal antibody usage, and we have very good ICU hospital care in Nebraska. So if you, if you get sick somewhere, hospitals, our Nebraska hospitals do do an excellent job. And many of our urban schools kept their masks on despite political pressure until cases decreased and most who wanted to get vaccinated, and this also saved a lot of lives. At the end of the day, it's dead versus not dead, uh, and uh, that's what I do. My day job is a clinical quality improvement. That's the, really the ultimate gauge, and who had the most most dead people, who had the least dead people, that tells you who did it right, and who did it right? Well, Lincoln Lancaster County, followed by Omaha Metro, I did the best. If you want to look at it graphically, and of course way better than neighboring states, uh, Lincoln and Lancaster County, again, doing the best, followed by metro area. Non-metro area actually didn't do much better than, than our surrounding neighbors, and so this was, I think, not really caught in that political ar political article. Some of us did it much better than others because it wasn't a state approach. It was more of a local approach where some got it right and some didn't. So it's that three-shot vaccination rate's the next big thing. Uh, one of my frustrations is politicians making up their own definition of endemic. Well, here's an article I'd encourage you to take a look at if you want to look at that that uh, you know controversy on what what really endemic means. In in his de in Dr. Lipkin's definition, it's when it, a de a de epidemic is endemic is it's consistently present but limited. What's well, not? It's still sloshing all over the world and around the country. Uh, are rates predictable? No, uh, we still don't have a lot of good handle on things. Uh, and, the, and the death rate is still actually higher than than a typical flu year. So I don't think our our mortality rates drop to what we would consider a normal baseline rate. I don't think we're at endemic yet, but we could be there if our third vac uh, shot vaccination rate were better, uh, which is a whole nother frustration. Uh, now a physician asked me uh, earlier this week, why is China in such bad shape? Well, China kind of got some things initially right, but then messed up the follow through, kind of like uh, like Dr. Lau was saying, the political art, they had to do the hammer right, but they didn't do the dance right. Uh, the problem is that they had their zero COVID policy means they have very little infection induced immunity and that would have been okay if they'd done really got good job with their vaccinations. And the problem is the Sinovac vaccine doesn't work as well as our mRNA and adenovirus factor vaccines. So they're not as effective, especially in the elderly and they prioritize working age population and not the elderly. So I think they're going to end up with a pretty high mortality rate. Uh, they're going to either A, they're going to have to do some severe lockdowns and then that's going to cause tons of economic and supply chain issues or B, they're going to have a lot of deaths or C, they're going to have to switch to our vaccines, which I'm not sure politically they can do. So China's a, a, in a world of hurt right now, and we'll see how that pans out. Um, it's the third shot vaccination rate, like I say, is the big thing. You need your three shots, not two. The uh, United States did a pretty good job initially, but just hasn't followed through where a lot of these under, other countries have done much better. Uh, Japan's always kind of interesting. My, I, my daughter uh, lives in Japan with uh, my, my son-in-law, who's Japanese. Uh, they no, Japanese bureaucracy is notoriously slow to get started, but once they get started, boy, do they get 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 to work. Uh, but really, South Korea is probably our, our poster child for really, really getting it right. Japan really pretty much as well. At the end of the day, like I say, it's dead, not dead. You know, look at these countries comparatively for how much mortality they had. You know, Japan, South Korea, barely above baseline, honestly, because they did a really good job overall. Some other uh, countries like Ireland, Canada, Germany did a little better. United Kingdom initially did horrible because they totally bought into Great Parrington until they realized that was wrong. Uh, we just never really got it right in the United States, and so we've uh, unfortunately passed even Italy when it comes to mortality. We haven't done the worst, at least, so, you know. They're still Brazilians, uh, we have, but I guess it's not too late for us to catch up with uh, Brazil and excess mortality. Hopefully that won't happen, and really it's going to come down to our three-shot vaccination rate. So, uh, you know, the, our own Nebraska data in this uh, state uh, credit goes to Dr. Matt, Matt Donahue, our, our uh, state epidemiologist, putting our hospitalization rate uh, age, fully age-adjusted with both no, not a vaccination, two shots, and three shots. So if you want really, really low risk, get that third shot. Um, that's going to make the biggest difference and make us most likely to be in, quote, endemic phase. 
Uh, again, uh, you need that, that natural immunity isn't good enough. It doesn't last enough without vaccination as well. So just because you got a natural infection doesn't mean you shouldn't get your three shots. Uh, it's that third shot, and especially the shot gives you better systemic immunity, whereas I think the natural, quote, natural infection gives you better mucosal immunity, but that's not what, that not, doesn't give you good enough protection from being dead in the hospital or long COVID. So get that sure third shot to get your maintained systemic immunity. So completed or up-to-date equals three shots, and that shouldn't surprise anybody. So that should be everybody 12 and over should be getting that third shot. Uh, what about the fourth shot? Well, you know, uh, when we should be surprised at these third and fourth shot. Uh, hepatitis B and rotavirus, those are three shot series. So that's not unusual to need a third shot. It's also not unusual to need a fourth shot. So D diphtheria, hemophilus, uh, pneumococcal, those are all three shot primaries with a fourth shot booster. Uh, so, you know, we should, uh, should be surprised at that. Uh, what should you do? Uh, well, whether you get a four shot depends on a couple other things. What are your health risks? Obviously, if you're uh, immunocompromised, you should be getting that. Uh, what's your own risk tolerance? There's very little risk to getting the four shot. So if you want that slight extra benefit, go ahead and get it. Uh, if you had three shots in Omicron in January, I probably wouldn't be quite as worried because like that other slide shows, you have pretty good persistent immunity when you had three shots to an Omicron. Uh, but pending travel, so what So you know, what did I do? Well, actually, pending travel is why I decided to get my four shot. Probably don't need it. I'm, young, I'm 52 and relatively healthy. Uh, but I got my fourth shot uh, a couple weeks ago, mainly because I was going to be doing so much traveling. I had uh, a national school board meeting in San Diego. I was visiting my, went to visit my daughter in Ireland. I had a meeting in Baltimore, visited more family in New Jersey. I got the fourth shot just to minimize the chances that I'd have an infection and have to have to uh, quarantine and miss some work, and it worked for me. Uh, I also am still wearing a mask in certain places. Most of the time, I'm not wearing a mask out in the community. However, I wear it in healthcare facilities, and I wear it from when I walk into the airport until the airplane hits cruising altitude. I'm not so worried about the airplane at cruising altitude because they have about 20 air changes per hour. Uh, unless someone right next to you has got COVID, you're probably protected, uh, especially if you're vaccinated. However, there's not very good ventilation when you're sitting on the tarmac uh, and, and when you're doing check-in loading. There's so many people, hundreds of people from all the world. The route for the next variant through is going to be in the airport. So I'm still going to be wearing air uh, masks in the airports for quite a while until I'm certain we're at the endemic phase, which I don't think we're at right now. So hopefully this is all helpful to you. I've got links to all these things uh, down below. So if you go to the notes sections, there they are. Disclaimer, this is what I do, but not necessarily the opinions of those organizations. They're mine. Uh, but hopefully this is helpful to you.